Good afternoon, and welcome once again to my daily little chat. Now we're at episode number 616, 616, and the topic today is do you power struggle in your relationship and what to do about it? Before I jump into that and give you some perspective, uh, let me choose myself so you know who I am and why I am about these talks and et cetera, et cetera. So my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and just checking, okay, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. Hi, Gary, good to see you. And every day, for the, well, actually, over two years ago, I started doing these talks called Messages to the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart because I am a passionate champion of the divine feminine, and now I've been doing them daily for quite a while, which is why I'm now episode number 616. And these are Facebook Lives, in case you're wondering if you're watching it in archive or on YouTube. So, um, yes. <laughs> so, every day I do these talks at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you haven't seen me live before, you can jump in and interact live if you wish. If you're watching the replay and archive, you can put comments in below on Facebook or on YouTube, and I'll give you those links later on. So you can interact and I can answer your questions there as well. So, this is episode number 616. And the topic today is: Do you power struggle in your relation? Do you power struggle? Excuse me, in your relationship, and what to do about it? And uh, hi, Dylan. I see you. And I should have talks for men too. These talks are for both, and a lot of my talks lately have become inclusive. So, just so you're aware, this talk is not gender specific. So, I guess I'm answering your question sideways. <laughs> in fact, recent talks have been. I'm trying to think. The last two, three talks have been genders, gender neutral, put it that way, not, not specific. So I hope you get this valuable too. So the thing about this power struggle thing is it isn't gender specific. That's why I'm getting to that point. And I mean this from point of view is it's, well, I should have probably said, in fact, do you can like to control your relationships? Because power struggle and this control thing sort of go hand in glove and they go together. Or I'm seeing three things show up. Go, Which way do I go with this? I've already got answers showing up before I have the question. <laughs> so, if you're in a relationship where you don't trust yourself enough and you've got to control everything with it, like like uh, uh, strength, like strangling everything energetically, you may have an issue to work on. If you are someone who likes to make sure things go your way and forget about your partner, you might be better off if you're single. Um, and if you're someone who basically likes your partner to do everything for you, to control everything, you don't want to do anything, you may have an issue as well. So I'm going to play on both of those. The reasons why power struggle happens in a relationship usually is because somebody thinks that they are the one that's supposed to be in charge, as strange as that sounds, and there's a desire to control and uh, influence the relationship the way they want to. In case you haven't realized, a relation and I'm talking about romantic relationships, by the way, this happens in other ones too, but it's really in romantic relationships, Control is one of these things that becomes an issue, and power is it's an interesting thing. I'm going to play with it. I'm going to explain it a little bit more in a moment. But the thing is, the reality of a relationship is there are two people involved. Like, duh, that is, of course, if you're monogamous versus polyamorous, which is another conversation not for this broadcast. But if you're in partnership, if you're in a relationship with somebody else, a partnership with another person, power struggle implies that you don't trust the other person, and or don't trust yourself. And for some people. That's their lifestyle. Like they don't trust anything outside themselves, or they don't trust anybody else in their life because they probably had issues when they were younger, where they were um, lied to, cheated to, put the trust in the wrong person that then um, broke their trust. That sort of thing. And if you watch my previous broadcast, the last few days I talked about um, automatic, automatic pilot, where we do certain things certain ways because we happened when we were younger. That's one of those as well. Additionally, there is this sense that power is somehow owned by one person only in a relationship versus sharing equally. And equality in relationships, one of these things I've talked about quite a bit. And frankly, it's a bit of an issue because the world has not set us up yet in conscious languaging in societal rules that relationships should be equal. Now, I'm a big fan of equal relationships, men and women having equal space in a relationship. Because the thing is, the wiring that people have been taken on is that back in the day, less than 100 years ago, in fact, like 50 years ago, 60 years ago, if not less, the men were the breadwinner. So put them in charge because they had they brought the money in, so they had, thought they had control. It's like they paid for their way to be in charge. And the woman was supposed to be the quiet, meek wife that took care of everything at home. That's the old model. That's the model my parents were, were raising me under. So I saw that paradigm in my own parents. The problem with that model 
is it is one it's very old-fashioned two it's inaccurate and three women aren't the same as they were 50 years ago in the role they play and the role they act they take on and the way they are in the world <coughs> excuse me second <clears throat> okay get it back on track so in this paradigm that we're moving into which is a lot more feminine leadership women stepping into their authority and their power thank god yes i'm a big fan of that it means the relationships don't don't um occur the same way as they did they can't the paradigm of the old day where it's like the man was the leader and the woman was the meek housewife doesn't fit the paradigm we live in anymore the problem is women won't back down to that and that's not true that's not the problem women will not back down to that and the problem is men don't know how to handle that that's the problem so hang on, just so what do you see there? So Carrie said, um, "Let the lioness hunt and bring home the food." I'd love to be a house husband. Oh, okay, you would, would you? And Della, I think it's the imbalance of feminine and masculine energy. Actually, I'd say it's the ignorance, in fact, of feminine and masculine energy. So it is an imbalance, but it's caused by ignorance because if once you know about it, it's easier to adjust to have balance. So it is a, definitely an imbalance and an ignorance in that sense. And Carrie, I'm not sure how to answer that, <laughs> that one. Actually, I, I remember reading somewhere recently, by the way, just as a sidebar, since you mentioned the lioness, that um, in, a li in, in the lion pride domain, the lioness actually is the leader. She's the boss. The, the lion himself is second fiddle to that, which is not what we were taught in school. Back, the, you know, the lion king, the king of the lions, the king of the beasts, was the, was the lion with the mane, the male lion. But truth is, in the lion culture, apparently it's not that way around. The feminine leads, the masculine supports. Which isn't a bad way of looking at things in some ways, because for some people that requirement, that shift has to happen to wake people up to what's possible now, because we are dealing with a cultural shift that many people haven't caught up with. Yes, they're all with a boss. You get it. Yeah, Carrie, you get it. And the thing is, and I'm saying this from, yes, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, lioness, lioness rules. Well, the thing is, and this is, the, this is the piece I want to get to. I didn't plan on getting here, but it's where I'm going anyway. In the sense of relationship paradigms, and I'm going to get back to the, the power control issue in a moment, we're dealing with a shift in the culture of business where women leading, stepping into their own authority, leading their leadership, and it's really changing the, the, um, the culture. Relationships have not, have not caught up as well yet. And the ones that are catching up are dysfunctional because most men have no way of reframing working with this. So the women are basically stepping into their leadership and men are either feeling threatened by that, which is often the case, and want to push the women down. That's a whole other conversation. I talked about that one before a few months ago. Or alternatively, men are just simply going to play beta to women being the alpha. And that's not right either. Because I've talked about it right at the beginning, is that relationship is about partnership, it's about equals. And in this new format, people haven't figured that one out. Thank you, Della. Yes, exactly. The, the, at least I think you're answering my point just now. No, you probably did about... 30 seconds ago because you typed yeah there's a sync thing between when you type and when I see it on my screen anyway staying on track <laughs> we are in a cultural shift that's happening where the relationship paradigm is yet to catch up with the world view that women are stepping into and that's the shift that we have to adjust to and that may be a whole new piece I need to talk about okay yeah not here but I'm going to talk about it another time because I'm going to speak to the back to the power and control piece so I'll say that I'll make a note for myself to talk about one later about the evolution of relationship attempting to keep up with the cultural shift we're going through because that's going to be a big topic maybe tomorrow we'll see anyway back to the power struggle control piece one of the things that I realize a lot of people don't know how to do is to let go and trust because a big piece of the control stuff is a fear of trusting and not being trustable so if you have an issue with your own level of control in any relationship and control with yourself or other people um Hang on, that hot thought. So, Carrie, it's 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 hard, man. When both work, we just run and run. Who cooks? Who shops? It's killing us. Both are exhausted after work. Well, this is the thing, Carrie. When you were in partnership, and you're both working, then you do both as well. You work out what works task-wise. You may discover that you know that he's better at one thing than she is. She's better at one thing than he is. I would recommend cooking something you do either together if you can shopping together if you can, because the truth is, when you share the responsibility and share the load and share the work. First of all, it makes it easier, and secondly, it brings you closer. And yes, when both are exhausted after work, one of those things can be, there are, there are certainly, certainly um, services out there where you can get food delivered. I mean, like food you can cook at home that's delivered to you. 
um, a friend of mine, they, they, they're busy with their, their workshops. They have a food delivery service that gives them a, sends a box every week of their groceries, and they basically just cook that week. So that would save a bunch of time by not having to shop. They go to Costco once a month and just fill up the, fill up the freezer, you know, that sort of thing. But there are ways around it. And the truth is, in this relationship paradigm we're shifting into, we're all maturing, we're all growing. And the thing is, it isn't necessarily easy. Because the old paradigm where one worked, one didn't, isn't happening as much anymore. Especially when there's no children involved. And even when there are children involved, there's a nanny, and then there's school, and there's all the other things to do as well. It's a challenge, I understand. Being an entrepreneur myself, I'm grateful I'm not working for a corporate environment where I have to work nine to five that, those hours so I can do things at different times. And as an independent person, that helps a lot. In relationship, that may make a difference because the thing is being with somebody who is a nine to five schedule or an eight to seven schedule, whatever the schedule is, and, the person, and one person is, one person isn't, can make a challenge as well. Because then all responsibility gets the, dumped on the person whose schedule is not the same, not as busy, it would seem. Anyway, that's for another topic. That's, that's, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about later on. But I want to finish. Up, I want to <laughs> attempt to finish off this piece about the control and power thing. One, one because that was what this talks about. I have a whole other talk brewing, which I'm going to talk about tomorrow. So save your questions on that one for tomorrow, please. And thanks for the inspiration for it. Um, so <laughs> back in the groove of what it's talking about, attempting relationships are a place where implicitly, if you want to have a healthy relationship, you need to be able to trust. And when you can trust, the need for control and power is not relevant in the sense that you don't have to control or have power over the other person. Power, however, is a, is a wonderful thing to have in relationship when you both empower, keyword difference, empower each other and empower yourselves to be the best partner you can be. And that's where you can shift the energetic from being one of being passive and controlling or dominating and sub submissive or beating and win losing to one where you both support each other and you move into much healthier and equal place because relationships can be equal but it's an evolutionary process and again I'll talk more about that tomorrow this is a powerful piece of the languaging which is to understand that um, that we are growing and changing as we speak this is a new thing that's happening and the power struggle has been going for a long time because again we came from a place where the man was in charge so he thought he had to control but the woman was at home taking care of everything else and one of these little secrets I was talking about my parents in this model Really, my mother had the power. As much as she was the one that stayed at home, took care of the kids, and did all the laundry and cooking and everything else, she was the power of the house. When my dad came home from work, she ran the show. So that power shift was not about who brought the money, was the breadwinner, which is what people think it is. It's the idea of being the old paradigm relationship that the breadwinner is the one that basically has control. No, they're simply the one that generates the money. But then the thing is that the other person generates other things, there's an equality, and again, I'll talk about that tomorrow, with the equality piece and the shift culturally from the old model to the new model. So I'll make a note for myself. I'll, I'll review this and make a note for myself for tomorrow. Just to make sure I did give you some information about the control and power thing. I think I did. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's about it. Um, no, there's one more piece. What is that? Okay, so trust I talked about. And trust, uh, okay got it so as I mentioned before about when you can let go and trust in relationship it actually frees you to be less controlling and need to have power you can be more in the flow it's also not so much about trusting the relationship trusting your partner which it is but it's also about trusting yourself and for most of us trusting ourselves in a relationship is challenging because we can't excuse me we don't allow ourselves to be transparent and vulnerable so if you have issues around control and power, 90% of that may be generated because you're afraid to be vulnerable, naked, transparent, that is, and, and intimate with your partner. So if you want to understand how to let go of that control, power, energy, how can you be closer to your partner? How can you be more intimate with your partner? How can you be closer in intimacy and trust and vulnerability with your partner? That's one idea. There's a few other ideas out there too, but this was the big one that's showing it for me, is that it's that trusting moving into the flow of a relationship and allowing yourself to be um, accepted into the relationship. And that's interesting. So shifted from control and power into acceptance and trust of yourself, of your partner, and from your partner to you as well. That's where the deep work is. 
Hmm, interesting. I'm going to leave it there because that's an interesting thing. I want to over here. That's something I want you to think about. Just like little, some grist for the mill, something to chew on. So play with that one. Um, by the way, today is a week out from Valentine's Day, which I've been putting some posts on Facebook about. If you are feeling unprepared for it or feeling challenged by it, I did talk about this a couple of days ago, and I will do some more talks closer to the day about how Valentine's Day is not something that create that crazy. You can let go of it. <laughs> Valentine's Day, let me just say this. Valentine's Day is a commercial windfall for companies. It has nothing to do with people. If you're in a relationship where Valentine's Day is that big day of the year, you may need to do some work on other days of the year. Because frankly, if you're focused on relationship being, um, sorry, if you're focused on Valentine's Day being the make or break of your relationship, you're doing it wrong. I'm very sorry about that. But the thing about relation, Valentine's Day, it is a hallmark holiday. As it is hallmark's windfall day, which I frankly don't really give a flying whatever about. I am romantic. But that should be 365, not one day a year. Anyway, I'll talk more about that later on towards Valentine's Day. And I will talk about tomorrow about the disparity between the, the evolution of our culture and the lack of evolution in our relationships, because that's going to be an interesting topic. So with that, thank you for watching and thanks for being with me as always. I hope this has been of relevant, relevance and inspiration to you. If you have any questions, again, put them in the comments below here if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, and I'll give you a couple of links. So if you are being stuck about relationships, I will put a link in the comments for my discovery session because... We can always do better on this. Uh, secondly, I'll give you the replay link. So I do the Facebook Live, this Facebook Live, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays on Facebook go on my business page, amongst other places, but my business page where you can definitely find them, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. I then put them onto my YouTube channel, which you can find me at, uh, that's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. There's a playlist on there. Oh, so please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Gotta keep asking that. On that channel is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, where all of these live on YouTube format. And by the way, for the last week or so, Facebook has been screwing up my heavy, my high, high definition downloads. Usually, my, my Facebook lives are saved in HD, but apparently, Facebook made a change to their app and it screwed everything up. So now I'm getting them in low res. So you, my replays. Excuse me, my replays on Facebook and on YouTube look kind of um, pixelated. The sound is okay, and you can still get the value from them, just they won't look as pretty. <laughs> just let you know about that. And finally, um, I have a podcast which I'm building out, which is uh, iTunes.com. Well, it's, it's on iTunes, and then the podcast is called Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to that and download the audio versions of these talks, the ones I've got up so far, and get some value from that. So first, for that, I thank you for watching. Um, if you haven't joined me before, join me again at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you know anybody who should watch this, please share it with them. And tomorrow, I've now got a new hot topic. So uh, tune in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and I'll see you then. Take care of yourself. Bye.